Okay, guys, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. So we have completed C sharp and SQL server. Now we are going to learn GI based applications. Okay, as I said, when it comes to GUI based applications. Okay, so basically, if you can divide this into two categories. Okay, so one is going to be Windows application, and second one is going to be a web based application web based application in case of web based application your mobile is also part of it mobile application and windows in case of windows your mobile is also part of it there is no separate application called mobile okay so technically you will have only windows and web windows means it is a stand alone application which requires physical installation. So if you want to use any Windows based application, it has to be installed physically in that particular device. When I talk about a device, a device can be a PC, a device can be a laptop, a device can be a tab, a device can be a mobile. For example, if you take Facebook and Facebook Messenger, right? And Instagram web and Instagram app, what is the difference? So when it comes to Facebook Messenger, in order to use your Facebook, you just need internet connection, right? You can access it from your browser. No need to install it explicitly in your machine. But if you want to use Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, you have WhatsApp and WhatsApp web. If you want to install WhatsApp, if you want to use WhatsApp, that has to be installed physically in your mobile. But if you want to use WhatsApp web, you don't have to install it. You can access it from anywhere using internet. So here, yeah, WhatsApp app is a standalone application that is called Windows based application, right? So a Windows based application can be installed on any device. If I install on mobile, it will become mobile application. If I install it on tab, it will become class, a standalone application, except the mobile. Mobile is a smaller device, right? Except mobile, I can install it anywhere on laptop, PC and anywhere. So there we call it as Windows. If that is installed in your mobile, we call it as a mobile application. That's it. Are you to me? Only the screen size, the compatibility, the responsiveness is going to be changed from device to device. Okay. Same thing from web also. When it comes to web application, there is no separate application called mobile. If you're designing any web-based application that targets all devices, that targets all devices. Are you getting me? If you're targeting mobile, we call it as mobile application. Okay. So here we have two things, standalone application and web-based application. Okay. So when it comes to standalone application, it requires physical installation. This has to be installed physically on any device, including your mobile. And when it comes to web, no physical installation is required. All you know is just, you just need a good internet connection. Using internet connection, you can access it from anywhere through your web browser. That is the difference between standalone application and web-based application. Any questions, guys? Okay, so now let's see how to design a Windows-based application. Let's move towards our next concept. First, we will go through Windows-based application. Yet you will get a chance to play with some control. Then we'll get into web-based application. Windows based application. For example, if I take Notepad, see this Notepad, right? This is Notepad Plus. If I want to use Notepad, what has to be done? This has to be installed physically in my machine. So Notepad is a application. It has a lot of controls. All these are, you know, controls. We call it as ribbon. This, this part is called as ribbon, ribbon controls. And these are called menus, file menu, this menu, and this menu. What are these? These are all different file menu options. What happens? If I click on anywhere, if I click on ploppy symbol, what is this? It will take care of perform an action. 
you can click on any icon on this ribbon control each icon will take care of performing a different action all these are called as controls Redmi. so whenever you want to perform any action you have to create a control in console there will be no controls if you want to interact with the user you have to provide some text you have to display some text on the screen hey enter this hey enter this that is the only way to interact with your end user in console are you me so when it comes to your ga based application it provides a rich interaction where you can interact with users using different different rich controls it is a graphical user interface graphical user interface are you me ga means graphical user interface so in console there will be no controls there will be no graphical things but here you can interact with your user using different different graphic based objects different those are called controls okay any questions guys no sir okay now if you want to implement a windows based application like this notepad notepad or anything now if i want to install if i want to use visual studio dot net what has to be done it has to be installed physical in your machine it means visual studio is also one of the windows based application if i want to use zoom app it has to be installed physical in my machine what is this it is also a windows based application here you can see this is one control copy invitation this is one control this is one control this is one control here we have different types of controls here you have some link in progress are you to me so in order to design a windows based application so you need to be aware of different types of controls and their use based on your requirement you have to choose that respective control on your application okay so let's see that as i said console is more powerful console is more powerful if you are good in console you could also design you could also design a technology like your dotnet and java there is a the power of console okay so when it comes to windows based application if you want to develop a geo based application you can also develop it using your console i mean for example when it comes to controls let's say there is a label control and text box control okay so for example if you go to your web here we are displaying something right so whenever you want to display something whenever you want to display something you have to use a control called label control if you if the user need to input something here if i click on here it will take me somewhere this is called hyperlink control right like this you will see many different types of controls in your ga based application so whenever you need to create any control from console you have to write lot of coding in ga based application each control is considered as a class label control is a class text box control is a class button control is a class every control is a class it means that control has been implemented using a class technically you are a developer you have to get into the low level things every control has been created every graphical user interface based control has been created using a class so you could create different different types of graphic based things from console also for example if i want to create a label i have to write the coding manually something like this as i said label is a class if i want to access any property of a label the object of this class has to be created right something like this label some lbl object name is equal to new label now using this object i can access all properties some the lbl dot name is equal to f name lbl dot text is equal to are you to me like this you need to write thousands of instructions as code in order to create a single label you have to spend lot of time ready me if if you want this control has to be created manually if you want to write your own code to create this control you have to write like this 
create object of that control and access all the properties, write all events and event handlers, you may need to write thousand lines of code. That might take a lot of time. To create a single control, if you spend this much of time in order to complete your project, think about the timelines. It might take years and years. It might take years and years. Read me. So that's why what Microsoft has done. As I said, Microsoft technologies are more user friendly, which will reduce a lot of burden on the developer. It will let you speed up your development process. It will let you directly play with the controls. Read me. So now what Microsoft has done. Microsoft has created an application called Windows based application. Microsoft is providing a ready made application called Windows based application where you don't have to write even single line of code to create your control. Where you don't have to write even single line of code to create your control. If I do not write a code, but how come the control will be created? Yes, you don't have to create it. You will have a toolbox where you can see list of controls. From there, you just need to choose that control, drag and drop it into your form. But how the control will get created? You don't have to write any single line of code. The moment when you drag and drop your control on behalf of you, Microsoft will take care of generating that code. If I choose that control, so whatever the code needs to be generated to create that control, that would be generated automatically by the system, right? Now it is saving a lot of time. Read me. So that's why we choose Microsoft Windows application to develop Windows based application. So you don't have to write single line of code to create your control. All you need to do is you have to choose the right control and play with the properties and do whatever you want to. Just write your action. That's it. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. So let's go there. Now, open your Visual Studio. Go to new project, new project. Now, these are all different application types. We have already seen console application, right? We have already learned console application. Now we are going to learn Windows based application. So here are all languages. We are going to work on C sharp. These are the different language support provided here. Next, it's not a web. We are going to work with Windows desktop. Windows is called desktop application, standalone application, Windows application. All these are same. No, I can see this menu. Now select Windows Forms app. Okay, here you will see .NET Core and .NET. Okay, Windows Form app, Windows Form app, .NET framework. And you can also develop this using core. Later we will see what is a core. Okay, that will be our last concept. Okay, any questions guys so far? No. Now select next. Now give your project name. Let's say my calculator. And where do you want to store it? So as I said, the .NET revelation has started from 1.0 version in, in the year of 1999. Right. So, as I said, you can target multiple frameworks. For example, if you want to work on multiple versions of .NET. So, as I said, in the beginning, when we discuss introduction to .NET framework, we have discussed about drawbacks of the system, right? Systems before .NET. There we were discussing about COM problem. What is a com component object model? Before .NET, if you take MS Office, you cannot install multiple versions of same MS Office in a single system. That problem has been overcome in .NET. Not only one version, you can install n number of versions of your .NET. 
అండ్ యువర్ కన్ యూ కెన్ వర్క్ ఆన్ దెన్ ప్యారల్ ఓకే నా ప్లేస్ సొల్యూషన్ అండ్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ డైరెక్టరీ క్రియేట్ i will create a windows based project for you so where you don't have to write even single line of code to choose your control to create your control okay the burden of only control creation will be reduced but rest of the thing has to be written so whatever the action need to be performed you have to write that action are getting me you have to write that action see Yeah, this is the you know like structure of your windows based application initially so this is my solution like your console application inside solution i can place n number of projects and this is my project by default my project name will be taken as this and here also same thing it will be very similar to your console application right except this form except this form it is very similar right there you see properties what will be there in properties your assembly information if you are creating multiple versions of your application for example initially we will be creating version 1.0 then we will release 2.0 3.0 so that information will be there in your assembly info okay next references so for example if you want to make use of any system based dll or third party dll that reference has to be added here like your console application so on behalf of you microsoft has already added few references which are required to start with your windows based application apart from this if you want to add any reference you can add it from here click on this you can add it from your dot net library you could also add it from your nuget package it also supports nuget packages right nuget package library is being used by all technologies not only microsoft technologies irrespective of the things java will make use of it dot net and everyone can go ahead and use it it's a kind of open library okay any questions guys no no sir okay okay right next app config as i said it is a configuration file we also have seen this in our console application so if something has to be taken dynamically at the run time or if something is going to be supplied dynamically at runtime if some service has to be called dynamically at runtime so that information can be kept in your configuration file so if i hard code something inside my class what happens whenever that value needs to be changed if i make any change in dot cs file the entire project has to be rebuilt recompiled but if i make any change in the configuration file no compilation is required you just need to make the change and save it so that's why so when it comes to configuration file whatever whatever is going to be changed frequently or whatever is common to all your project things we do keep those things in the configuration file for example when it comes to your server details right whenever you want to connect sql server you have to provide the details say like what is the server name what is the database name and which authentication has to be used windows or sql or readme so for example when it comes to real time environment you will see four different environments dev qa pre prod and prod you will be working on development environment while you are working in development environment here you will point your application to dev server and when it once you have completed your development then move your application to qa now this value needs to be changed because it should be repointed to qa database server when it gets moved to pre prod this should be repointed to pre prod server so what is happening this value is getting changed from environment to environment in this case if i keep that value inside my cs file dot cs file what happens whenever i change it every time i have, I have to rebuild it ready me so that's why if something is going to be changed frequently do not hard code those things rather get them stored in your configuration file this is app.config application configuration file 
if anything is related to the configuration of your application, you can have them here. Any questions, guys? No. So no, later we will see. Okay. Next. By default, your application will be provided with a default form, which is called form one. What is a form? This is called user interface. This is called user interface. For example, if I open my Zoom, what is this? This is my form. In console, you will have console environment, console window. Here I can see everything on GUI. So here, if you open Zoom, what is this? This is called form. This is called form. So technically, what is a form? Form is like a container, which will have collection of controls. Your form is like a container. For example, if you want to submit something, for example, if you want to apply for a job, form is a normal term being used everywhere. If you want to apply for a job, what do you have to do? You have to fill up a form. You have to fill up a form. What will be there on the form? On the form, you will see set of fields like your name, your father name, your date of birth, your gender. What are those? If you take me a paper form, if you need to fill it manually, what is a form? Right, you have to fill up the form. What is a form? It's a paper. It's like a container where you can see set of fields. You have to fill all those fields. Right, that is a manual process. Now, here you are automating that manual process. Here also similar thing. For example, if you want to register with WhatsApp or Gmail or anything, what happens? You will be taken to a form. That is called web form because you are filling it on the web. That is called web form where you need to fill your username, password and everything. Then click on save. Are you me? So here also same thing. In Windows, you'd be needing a form where I need to keep all my requirements, all my fields. I should ask a user to fill those fields. So here it is Windows. That's why we call it as window form, window form. If it is a web, we call it as web form. But technically, form is a container which will have collection of fields where you can place set of controls based on your requirement. Something like first name, last name, anything, any control. Okay. So by default, it is provided with form. But based on your requirement, you can create n number of forms. Not only one form, you can create n number of forms. But as a developer, you should be aware of the background implementation of the form. So technically, form is also a class. If I want to create a ma it manually, what should I do? I should create something like this. If I want to create it manually, form f1 is equal to new form. Are you getting me? If I want to create it manually, I should create like this in the console. But here, Microsoft has already done it. Every form comes with two files, designer.cs and .cs, designer.cs and .cs. What is there in designer.cs? So this is the CR. As I said, this is the background implementation of form. If you want to create it manually, so you have to write this much of code in console. You have to write this much of code in your console. If you want to create it manually, this much of code has to be written manually in the console. But what CN Microsoft has done, whenever I add any form, you don't have to write this code on behalf of you. This code will be generated automatically by the Microsoft system. And let me designer CS. So this is a code that we use to design this form. Okay. So every Windows form will have two files, designer.cs and .cs. There is a relation between these two. Designer.cs will have the designer code of form and dot cs will have so whatever the control is placed whatever the control is placed on your form again every control itself will have set of properties and you may need to write some actions for example if i click on save what has to be done my data has to be saved into the database where should i write my action if I click on something, some action has to be done. Where should I write my action? So all your actions should go to form1.cs. If I double click on this, 
it will take me to dart cs file this is a place where you can write all your action it is very similar to your c sharp right in the c sharp also same thing it is very similar to your c sharp namespace a namespace will have collection of classes a class will have collection of events and what is the relation between form on dart cs and design dot cs this is the design what is the name of this form one i can rename this if i want to i can rename this a rename i am just going to make it as main form so when it comes to real time environment we usually follow coding standards if it is a form we usually start it with fr we do give some prefix and suffixes i am giving it as main you can give any name press enter now class name and everything will be changed see what happened it got changed to a form and technically class your form is also a class right designer so designer will have the designer code of form now if i go to main.cs what is there in main.cs see class form main which inherits form form is a base class we have a dl called system dot windows dot forms we have a dl called system dot windows dot forms it comes with system dot windows dot forms namespace this namespace comes with set of classes each class is nothing but one control and form is a class which comes with this namespace right now in order to make use of all the properties in order to reuse all properties of form what my class is doing it is inheriting the existing functionalities of form now i can reuse all properties of a form so here you have two files i will see the designer code in the designer.cs and whatever i am placing here under my main form that will be part of this the designer code and actions only actions will be part of .cs any questions guys no no sir okay and if you want you can delete this and you can add it again if you want to add a new form add new form form windows forms form1.cs you can give any name form main double click on this and see okay by default one default form will be provided with you okay but if you want you can delete it and add your own form and you can add a number of forms okay and if you look into this what is the use of a constructor in a class technically form is a partial class what is a partial class what is the difference between class and partial class this is very important guys class and partial class both are similar for example we need to develop 100 different functionalities within one week we have a requirement where we need to develop 100 different functionalities in one week we have only 10 developers are working and all these 100 functionalities should be placed into student class student class in the same project now let's say developer one has created a class called student in the same project now you are going to create another class with the same name will it be allowed i want to create in the same project in the same name space i want to create one more class with student is it possible no no, no because there will be a conflict in another name space you can create it in the same name space because it should have a unique name 
so here we have a requirement of developing 100 functionalities we have the capacity of only 10 people right now all 100 functional should be placed inside your student class now what has to be done developer one has started working on now i split those 100 functionalities among 10 developers now each developer is going to develop 10 different functionalities right now developer one has started creating his functionalities in student class he has created his own student class and writing this what about developer two he should also keep the functionals in the same file he has to wait for developer one to complete his functionalities next developer two has started next developer three and other developers has to wait for two has to complete his functionalities what happens this way it is going to take a lot of time you cannot complete it within 10 days one developer has to wait for another developer to finish his work that leads to a problem can't we create if there are 10 different developers can't we create 10 different classes and ask them to put only their functionalities ask developer one to put is only 10 functionalities in any class and ask developer to create one more class with the same name and put his functionalities ask developer 3 developer 4 developer 10 ask them to create 10 different classes put their own functionalities and whenever i compile my application all these classes should be compiled into a single class finally it should be consolidated into a single class if that is possible one developer has to one developer no need to wait for another developer to finish his work you don't have to wait for that right all 10 developers can work parallelly they can finish their functionalities parallelly but what i need is it should not throw any error if i create any class with the same name and technically once all 100 functionals are completed finally all these 10 should be compiled into a single class is that possible if you can make that possible yes you will be able to complete all 10 100 functionalities at a time right yes that is possible c sharp made it possible by introducing a class called partial class you have to use a keyword called partial that's it if i create a class like this it doesn't allow me to create another class with the same name but if i use partial keyword partial it means it is a partial class it is a partial class it means yes this class is having only partial implementation and another part of this class is being developed by another developer if i use partial i can create n number of classes using same name and it supports parallel development now all developers can work parallelly read me i will ask them to create their partial classes with the same name now the beauty of partial class is whenever you compile your application all these partial classes will be compiled into a single class with a single name student when it comes to the end user there will be a single class with the name student if i create object to student and press obj dot i'll be able to see all 100 functionalities that is the beauty of partial class any questions please no sir okay whenever multiple developer need to work on the same class then your approach should be towards partial class okay so by default they consider this form as partial okay now multiple people can work on that same thing at a time that is the beauty of partial class okay and what is the constructor of a class whenever your class objects gets created during that initialization if you want to perform some action like whenever my object gets created some action has to be performed automatically i don't have to call it xpt like your trigger so when something has to be done automatically during your object creation in c sharp we used to have a constructor right we used to have a yes, constructor sir. so here also your main form main will be provided with constructor see public what is the name of the constructor constructor name should be in same as your class name see constructor are you getting me so this is the constructor so whenever the object gets created for your form immediately this constructor will be executed here i'm calling initialize component what is initialize component so whenever this constructor gets called it makes a call to this method go to definition right click on this click on go to definition 
what is there where is this initialized component here right so what it will do you will be placing you will be beautifying your form with the different colors different text you will be keeping lot of control on your form what initialized component will take it will take care of initializing everything whatever needs to be initialized whatever needs to be created whatever the resource to be created your initialized component will take care of setting everything that's why whenever my constructor gets executed whenever my constructor get executed what i am doing so during this object creation my constructor will be called and during this object creation what has to be done so whatever the control that is placed on your form everything has to be initialized with set of properties according to my requirement okay and after this and every when you talk about form form with form comes with set of events and event handlers set of events and event handlers okay so now if you want whenever my form is loaded okay constructor is different constructor will be called during its object creation after my object object is created after every control is loaded properly now i want some action has to be done automatically once my form is loaded successfully into main memory some action has to be done automatically then if i double click on my form it will take me to a event are it me so what happens whenever i click on there immediately this will be executed automatically whenever my form is loaded this event will be executed automatically so that's why we call it as load event load event once your form is loaded successfully this will be loaded this will be executed automatically by the system so if you want to perform some action after your form is loaded if some action has to be done automatically when my form is loaded where should i write that action when it comes to windows all you need to know here is what type of controls are available here what is the use of each control what is the purpose of them when should i choose those control and where do i write my actions where do i write my actions that is most important when it comes to ji based on you need to know if this has to be done in this scenario where should i write my action are you to me here yeah, same thing if you have a requirement of performing something after your form is loaded where should i write my action oh form comes with a load event that event will be executed automatically whenever is form is loaded successfully into the main memory now where should i write action inside form load how to see this if you double click on this it will take you to your dart cs file if i keep something here here you can write any kind of action whenever my form is loaded successfully then this will be called automatically this will be executed automatically any questions guys no sir okay next now your form how do i resize it you can just resize like this horizontally and vertically okay by default it comes with minimize close and maximize buttons and this will have set of properties now i can change the background of this here what is the title of this it is showing as form main i want to change the title i want to change the background all right me so if you want to beautify your form control just right click on this go to properties right click on this go to properties our uh, shortcut is press f4 press f4 if i press f4 see here i can see here i can see set of properties either click on properties or shortcut keys f4 here i can see back color background image you can also keep a background image back color i can choose different set of colors web custom are you to me you can give any color see and you could also keep a background image a background layout and font style four color text color you have set up properties here form main i'm just giving it as registration form let's say user 
registration. User registration. What happened? Credit card changed to user registration. Right? So you can do like this. You can play any one of these. And mode also. Your Windows style. You have different sides of Windows. Are you to me? So just play with all these. This. Okay. Any questions, guys? And Windows state by default. Whenever I write my application, the windows should be open in minimized mode, maximized mode, and normal mode. Okay, so play with this. Okay, right. <clears throat> so this is our first control that is form control. So what is a form? It's like your normal form, application form, normal application form. If you're going to apply for something, they will give you a form where you will see set of fields on that form, your field name. It is also similar. Okay, next. Now this will act as a container for collection of control where you can place different types of controls on this form based on your requirement okay and where can i see different types of controls so on the left side you will have toolbox as i said you don't have to write even single line of code on the left side i will have a toolbox where i can see set of control wait for a second it is initializing see here i can see this type of controls all windows comes control here you can see all controls but it has categorized into different controls common controls these are the common controls used everywhere in every windows and web based applications like label text box button and all these things okay you will have different types of control containers menus and toolbars these are called menus and toolbars these are menus right file edit view these are menus how do i create my own menus okay we will see them so let's move towards the first one that is common control here we are going to discuss the first control called label label what is a label control label is like a read only for example if you take your zoom here you can see it is displaying dotnet training here i can see dotnet training i'm clicking on this can i edit this no it is a static text i cannot edit it Try to edit, so I'm clicking on this. I cannot edit it. Yeah, they're just displaying some message. Whenever you want to display some static text on your form, then you have to use a control called label control. Whenever you want to display some static text on your form, then you have to use a control called label control. Okay, so how do I place it? Go to your common controls. For example, here I would like to give a title title to my form title is a static text static text means it cannot be edited by the end user it is not editable there you can make use of your label see what i'm doing just select and drag and drop see go to toolbox if you double click also under unlabel if i double click also see it will be placed automatically but we don't know where it will be placed it will be positioned right so you can just select and move it like this. Press your mouse button and move it like this. Okay. Or you can directly drag and drop wherever you need to. Here I want to place it here. Okay. Now, as I said, it comes with properties. Go to properties or press F4. Here, these are the properties of label. Text, what has to be displayed? What has to be displayed? Let's say user registration and every control has to be because you will be keeping so many titles you'll be keeping so many labels as i said every control is a class so every control should be provided with a unique name every control should be provided with a unique name here i can see the name
here by default it is label one right i am just giving it as we usually as i said when it comes to real time environment we follow some coding standards we usually start label with lbl text box with txt lbl gives some meaningful because with this you should be able to identify your control user registration so what happens technically internally as i said label is a class it creates an object with the name lbl user registration and it will have these many properties and here you can change the background color you can change the font style font style here you can see if these are different font styles you can choose any one of them read me and this is the size is getting increased right now if you want you can make it bold so if you set it true it will become bold and italic strike underline whatever is there in your word you can make use of all the properties and there are two things four color and back color back color is nothing but your background color four color is nothing but your text color here i can choose anything are you getting me okay any questions guys no no sir so every control should have its own unique name because whenever we write our action in dot cs file this is dot cs file right if i want to access that control here i should make use of its name see if i type here lbl it will come here just see okay so here see it came lbl user registration so if i want to <clears throat> because what i will be writing i'll be writing actions i'll be playing with the controls if i click on this thing what has to be done if i click on this what has to be done so there i'll be using these names that's why while naming your controls give you a meaningful name here i can also set that this i can set this text label dot text not only from there i can also set it dynamically are you to me initially it will be user registration but whenever i set something it will become for example my name is a a a are you to me <clears throat> now what happens so this is your form initially we set it to user registration right whenever your form gets loaded what happens this load event will be executed automatically and whatever i have written inside this load event this will be executed automatically so what is my action i'm just changing the title okay now how do i run it just click on start or press f5 See, this is my my name is A A A. It got changed. It got changed to A A. So you can maximize it. Are you with me? So as I said, just keep your breakpoint here. Same thing. Here you can write try catch. Here you can use debuggers, breakpoints. It is very similar to your console. Now as I said, first control will go to here. right because this is the constructor during object creation constructor will be executed first and we are calling initialize component from this constructor then initialize component will be called then load will be executed see it came to constructor now it came to load right so 
the name is already there here i can see the name of this what is this exist name is user registration now we are overriding it with this thing and here you can see two parameters sender and event args sender and event args sender means who it it raised from who whoever is calling this event from calling environment the caller will become sender it will also capture the sender information and if they are passing any event arguments parameters it will be there here okay right now it will get overridden with this thing any questions guys no sir okay next let's move towards the next control that is text box text box text box why do you need a text box for example i am going to create uh, i am going to create a registration from where user should enter his details how to place this ask him to enter this something the first to name and ask him to enter first name right where should i enter the first name here i would be needing a control how do i display first name if i want to display first name this is a static sticks which is not editable here i need to place a control to display first name text but if the user has to enter some input if you want to take input some from the end user then you would be needing a editable field here editable control here that is your text box that is your text box text box allows user to enter and edit some value whereas your label doesn't allow user to enter anything it just displays some static text but your text box is both it displays something it allows user to edit something it allows user to edit enter something okay so if you want to capture some input from the end user then you have to choose another control that is text box let's see that for example toolbox first i'm going to place a label first name okay here now user should enter first name so to allow him to enter something you have to place another control called text box text box right and you can expand the size like this text box will also have its own properties name property and text property so as i said every control should be provided with unique name Let's see name we usually start text box with txt txt first to name okay next if you want you can copy the controls also select this and i can also copy this something like this if you need same controls read me i can copy control c you can also use control c and control v see again what is this last name go to the properties of this and change name to lpl last name and text and text is going to be here it is last name now give the name of your text box this is going to be txt last name okay now let's run this okay now here 
this is not editable first name i cannot edit but text box here i can enter something last name i can enter something and erase something enter something erase something any questions please no okay <clears throat> next when it comes to text box it contains text mode select that particular control so just play with this okay play with this every control whatever we are explaining here please go and play with all those things okay for example <clears throat> this is user login form let us feel that this is user login form not user registration let us consider as login form where you need to enter user id and password here it is username and this is password username and password right now run this now i can enter the username when i enter the password here you need to provide some security for this if i enter this see if that gets displayed on your ad machine what happens others can see your password there is no security for your password right what has to be done we should not display the original character rather we have to display some special characters this has to be hidden or it should be masked using some special characters right so how do i do this here it comes with a property called password care password care are you to me if i set it to what has to be displayed in plus of your original character what has to be displayed i want start to be displayed you can give anything hash or anything now let's see here username can be displayed password see if i am write something it is giving stars only it is it is masking my password now my password is safe others cannot see this any questions guys no sir okay next <clears throat> in one of the scenario i need to capture comments comments but comments this is not enough right you should provide multi line and you should provide a scroll bigger because i can enter more than 200 characters 250 characters i can write some summary here right so if i write here what happens everything will be on the same line right so it will not be aligned properly i cannot see everything properly right so to make it arrange properly what has to be done you have to provide multiple rows in the text box you have to make it as a multi line text box yes you can do that here we have a property called multi line by default it is false if i set it to true it will become multi line where i can increase the size of i can increase the width as well as height and you can also provide the maximum length maximum number of characters that are to be allowed here it allows 36767 you can also change it right so let's see that now run this this is multi line text box now i can write n number of lines so change remove the password care remove the password care
Let's see. I can write anything. Hi. Are you me? Now you can also, for example, once this gets exceeded, the predefined size, it should be provided with scroll bars where I can scroll it from right to right and right to left and top to bottom. That is also possible here. Here you have a property called scroll bars. Here, scroll bars. What type of scroll bar has to be provided? Whether you want only horizontal or vertical or both. If I say both, both will be provided. Now see. If it gets exceeded, See, scroll bars are provided automatically. Now, where I can use this to any question size? No. no, sir. This is something about your label, text box, in text box. You can turn it into password based text box. You can turn it into multi line text box. Okay. Now, so far, we have seen only form load. If you want to perform any action after your form is loaded, then you can write your action inside this. But no, I want to see when it comes to real time application. For example, if you take registration from your Facebook or Google, in the registration form, you will see a button called save. Whenever I click on save, some action will be performed. That action is going to take care of saving your data. Right? So here also we should do that kind of thing. Okay. If you take Microsoft Calculator, Cans. What is this? What is the Microsoft calculator? This is a form. Technically, this is a Windows based application. It is a form. Are you me? And these are all controls. If I say five, what is this? Here it is labeled. They're displaying this text using label. Are you me? And what are these? These are all buttons. If I click on plus and click on is equal, some action will be done. Some action will be done. Already me, these are all button controls. Now you need to prepare an application like this. If you're aware of the button, now you can go ahead and create your own calculator application. Okay. Now let's go with next one that is button. Okay. Next. <clears throat> And when it comes to program.cs, as I said, every application requires its own starting point that will be used by the compiler. What is the starting point of your console application? Main program. Here also, you will see the main. This is the starting point. STA thread, starting thread. Whenever I click on start, what happens? Only this program will be executed. You are Control is aware of only this thing. You can create any number of forms. It doesn't anything about it. Whatever is written inside this, it will take care of executing only that. Here, what we are saying, <coughs> we are giving the <coughs> form name. We are saying that a new form main means it will create object of your main form. It will run that form. Read me. If I change this, if I add one more form, <coughs> let's say, new form calculator form okay now what happens if i run my application still only my main form will be loaded because here we are saying that load only main form if i want calculator form has to be loaded this one has to be loaded Okay, now I should give this as a starting form. You should tell the system what has to be started first. If I change it to this, 
what happens now it will start my calculator form okay you should tell the system what is the starting object starting form of your project see now form calculator got started okay now let's move towards the next control that is button button control so when you talk about button button is a special type of control it's not like your text box or first name whenever you need to perform any action if i click on something some action has to be performed are you doing me if you're expecting some action has to be performed on click when user click somewhere some action has to be performed then we require a special type of control called button okay using button you can perform different types of actions when you talk about a button button comes with an event called click event click event whenever i click on the button immediately this event will be triggered if you want to perform some action on button click where should i write an action you should write inside click event because if i click on this this will be fired on click if something has to be performed that should be written inside click event let's see that for example your calculator let's prepare our calculator application okay so go to your form calculator <clears throat> now first let's perform at go to tool parts okay so first let's keep something label or you can also directly keep a text box text box 1 text box 2 okay user will enter one number here one number here now you have to perform at text box 1 give the name of the text box txt first number txt second here user will enter one number here one number here now i'm going to keep a button if i click on that button it should take care of adding these two numbers and displaying the result okay for result for displaying the result i am going to keep a label here on top label this is going to be lbl result now i am going to keep my control button control as i said button is a special type of control whenever you want to perform any action you have to take a button if i click on button button comes with a event called click event if i click on this that event will be fired if you want to perform any action on button click your action has to be placed inside that event give the button name let's say button action and you can also change the name of your button color of your button you can beautify your button by default this button i can give you it as calculate you can give any name you can also give them now as i said button event button comes with a event called click event where should i see that event if you double click on this it will take you to cs file that event will be generated see now you can see apart from your form load now i can see another event called button action underscore click now what happens whenever i click on the button immediately this event will be fired if you want to perform some action on button click where should i write my action i should write my action inside this event here what is our action user will enter one value here one value here 
now i should read those two values add those two values and print the result in the label whenever i click on this calculate it has to add these two values and print the result in the label okay now where should i write my action inside click event button comes with the event called click event whenever you click on button it will be fired immediately okay now i can access all those texts first what has to be done i should i should create a variable call int result it will be very similar to your c sharp now i have to read the first number int first number is equal to where is my first number first number will come from first to text box what is the name of this text box if i want to read the value entered by the user in the first text box user will enter number in the first text box now i have to read it from the text box so how do i read it so what is the name of first to text box it is txt first number okay so go to your cs here i have to read it txt first number dot text what it will give me so whatever is there in this text box using text property of this control what is the name of this control txt first number if i call text property what it will give me so whatever is there in the text box that returns to me but it will be written in the form of a string text property returns whatever is entered by the user like your console dot read line it returns that value but will be written in the form of a string so if you want to perform any mathematical operation it has to be converted into original format that is number so convert to dot 2 into 32 of text box value so <clears throat> this value will be converted into integer right user will enter one value in text box 1 one value in text box 2 now we are calling text property of first to text box this will give me the value entered by the user but that will be coming in the form of a string so i am converting it into integer next similar way int <coughs> second number is equal to i should read it from second text box see here if i press tab it is, it is giving the suggestions convert that to a txt second number read me so if i press tab it got generated automatically this is the beauty of 2022 okay <clears throat> now what i am doing i am reading the second value from second text box storing it into this now what should i do i should add these two numbers i should add these two numbers okay so now a result is equal to first number plus second number result is equal to first number plus second number yes user has entered the value in the first text box and second text box i read those values and added those two stored into result now what should i do i should display that result in the label in this label what is the name of this label lbl result lbl result i should display that in the lbl result lbl result dot text text is equal to a result i should display a result but it's not like this i should display something like sum is sum is where is my result result any questions guys let's keep a breakpoint here okay now i am entering it as 12 and 13 as i said if i click on this what happens it comes with the event called click event immediately that event will be triggered now click on this now it came to click event so what is there in the first text box 12 so what is there in the second text box 13 now i am reading those values see now this is first number this is second number we are adding these numbers 
and displaying the result. Now click on this. See, sum is 25. Any questions, guys? No. Okay. No, sir. So this is something about your button control. Okay. <clears throat> so I want you to practice these things today. I'm going to stop the session here. Tomorrow, we'll be discussing more other controls. Okay. And we'll be writing some advanced functionalities also. Okay. I will give you the clear idea of what is the role of delegate, event, and event handler. We will prepare a messenger like your WhatsApp. I'll let you know how to do that. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, guys. And please do play with these controls and their properties. Okay. Now you can okay. prepare your own calendar control. Okay. So what is the okay. control? It is very simple. Now you are aware of the button and everything, right? What he did, he just placed the buttons. These are all buttons. They gave the text as one, two, three, four, five. These are all buttons. And we are displaying the text here. And whenever I click on this is also a button. They gave text as is equal to this is also a button. If I click on this, it will perform that respective operation. Okay. Try that. Okay. We'll let you know. Okay. Right, guys.